Hello everyone out there, hope you're having a great day. I just want to do a short little video today, um, going over a few, just a few quotes from this book I've been reading. It's called The Deep Things of God, How the Trinity Changes Everything. Um, this is written by Fred Sanders. You can see it right there. It's put out by uh, Crossway Publishing. This is the same people that, that put out the ESV. And uh, for the, if you've been following my channel, um, you know I've been working on, uh, I'm, I'm currently working on a, uh, a big book about the Godhead explaining you know who God is and all the little, just all the different things. I mean, very, very detailed um, thing. And so, and just so again, for a kind of short update, that's going great. Um, for those that are wondering, um, getting a lot of work done. But the the research is still continuing, and I'm and I have to research a lot of the different heretical different sects. And again, if you're just tuning into this channel, um, I'm not a Trinitarian. I do not believe in the in the Trinity of three separate uh, you know divine persons and you know all the other stuff. Um, and again, also, I'm not a modalist. I reject that, and 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 I have videos explaining why I'm not, and I refute that, and you know some of that stuff. And same with all the other weird heresies out there, you know, like Arianism or polytheism or you name it, right? I believe again, in short, that Jesus Christ, you know, God is one God, and He is one person consisting of a body, soul, and a spirit. Jesus Christ, who is the Son, is the body. God the Father is a soul and the Holy Spirit is a spirit. And I say that because, again, man is made after the image and likeness of, of, of God. That's Genesis 1.26, Genesis 2.7. And then you can compare that, with again, with 1 Thessalonians 5.23 and then Hebrews 4.12 where it talks about it gets into the, you know, the tripart uh, being a man. And, and, and like I said, I've got a bunch of videos and studies and I'm not going to go over all that in this video. Check those out. Anyway, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm um, you know, so I've been getting a lot of books, you know, for research and getting so I can get some quotations just so I can, you know, and from all, and by the way, from all different angles and viewpoints, I don't, I don't just get a whole bunch of Catholic books and then, uh, and then that's it or something. No, I, I'm getting from the Catholics, the, you know, pro Protestants, from Baptists, from, excuse me, from professing King James only, from Pentecostals and, you know, Seventh-day Adventists, you know, it, all different walks, you know, of life and not denominations and sects. I want to get their perspective and get their quotes on it, just so I can you know cover all my bases, you know. Well, this one here again, it's put out again, like I said, put out by Crossway. They put out the ESV. This one is written by a professing evangelical, written to evangelicals. That's what he talks about in this thing, um, and also to you know, again Southern Baptists, you know, other Pentecostals, you know, and and basically anyone that professes to be an evangelical this is basically who's written to. Um, and I just want to say I have not finished this. I'm. You know, I want to you know, give or give or take about a quarter of the way through, but I just I, I, I read some of these quotes and I just thought, okay, I, I have to show a video on this because this perfectly and accurately describes why the Trinity is false. And you're gonna see this this evangelical here admits to it. This Fred Sanders guy, I don't know anything about him. Um, um, and I have a bunch of stuff highlighted, but uh, and there's just I mean, and like I said, there's a lot of stuff we could show here, but uh, this is on. And I'm just going to show a couple quotes here, but again, this accurately describes what the Trinity thing is all about and why it's wrong. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll give you just a couple of scriptures and when we're done here to show you just plain, simple why it's wrong. Um, this is on page 27 here. It's uh, he says here here in, here in the introduction, I have asserted that the evangelical tradition is a profoundly Trinitarian tradition within Christianity. There's the quote here, highlighted in purple. I don't know how well you all can see that, but there you go. Like I said, I'll give the scripture for that. Moment, but if you get if you're if you're saved and you, and you know your Bible, you already know there should be some scriptures going off in your head going, "Uh oh, that, there's a problem there." You know. And uh if you're just new to this, we're gonna, I'll, I'll show you this in a moment. Um you know, and of course this this evangelical, he's very ecumenical um for what I've gathered in here, you know, he you know, because he brings up all these ancient church fathers and you know people, people like Augustine. He even brings up like Thomas Aquinas, like he's some great guy, um, which again is a is a Catholic saint from the 13th century. And what's interesting uh, too, and, and as I've read so far, that they, this author brings up like quotes of like different other evangelicals throughout the years, and like quotes their like confusion on it. Like they're sitting there going like, "Oh, I, I'm just I don't get it. This doesn't make any sense. There's no scriptures that say it, and I'm just I'm so confused." It's like, well, that's kind of the point, <laughs> you know. There is no scriptures that say this stuff. It's it is tradition, and even even one point here, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, I'll show you this one here very quick, very quickly. This is on page 43. Um, um, the 
Um, the, the, the subheading for this new paragraph is 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 a how a doctrine stopped working because again, there's a big old thing. You know, oh, you know, oh, Trinitarianism is dying, and you, you, you now we've got to now we've got to restore it. You know, and you know, it, it's it, it's the same type of language that you know that James White uses in his book, The Forgotten Trinity, and it's you know, forgotten, quote unquote. Anyway, but this is the quote here. He says, um, "It is now a commonplace to note how poorly the doctrine of the Trinity." fared when the world turned modern. The regimen of, of, of rationalism in this worldliness that took hold of, of intellectual culture sometime around the late 17th century was not kind to this central Christian doctrine. That story, along with the tale of the doctrine's supposed rescue, listen to this, along with the tale of the doctrine's supposed rescue by theologians such as Karl Barth and Karl Rahner is strictly told in histories of the doctrine. Now, that's, that's crazy that he would say this, because um, again, Call Barth. If you know anything about Call Barth, Call Barth again is a, is a Catholic scholar. I, I forget which uh, it was Pope Pius whatever is, is uh, you know one of them. He actually is quoted as saying that Call Barth is um I'm paraphrasing here, but he was like one of the greatest um, uh, greatest theologians since Thomas Aquinas, which is saying a lot because I mean Thomas Aquinas is one of the most infamous saints in all of Catholicism. And then Karl Rahner, Karl Rahner is a is a is a Jesuit scholar. So suppose we hear the people that, that help you know restore and save, you know the, the doctrine of the Trinity, are two Catholics. One of them again cited as being one of the greatest Catholic theologians, and another one a Jesuit. What does that tell you? <laughs> um, oh, before I forget, let me show you the quote. Sorry, almost forgot. This is on page forty-three. You can see the highlighted thing right there. Again, hopefully that shows up well for you guys. And if you, if you need to pause and read it, go right ahead. And uh, let's see here. And again, like I said, they, they show other people um, that like they're like they're so confused with the doctrine and it was, and and they don't because like, because exactly the point it's, it is confusion. There's nowhere in scripture that even talks about this stuff. Um, I'm just there's a bunch of stuff I highlighted, but uh, this is a uh, um where's the one um I think I skipped one here oh here okay, this is on page 58 he talks about you know you know how you know and, you know not only with the train but how you know how we you know um, describe and base our doctrine but mainly on the context of the Trinity he says here quote on page 58 the sources you know, then of how we you know understand this stuff and how we get to these you know, answers, he says. You know, just to give some background, uh, the sources then are liturgy, tradition, and sacrament. Now, what does that sound like to you? <laughs> just to show you the quote, bump the page there, and then um, next page. I I thought this was pretty funny. He's quoting some guy. Uh, who who is this quoted by? Um, uh, this is quoted by some guy named uh, Andrew Luth in his uh, invocative study, Discerning the Mystery, an essay on the nature of theology. Ooh, you know. Uh, so he, but the, 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 this quote says here, for the, uh, this is the author speaking now. For these churches, tradition is a kind of deposit that we can adhere to in an exercise of implicit faith in, in without necessarily specifying the, the propositional content of that faith, or at least not need to specify all of it at any given time. And then quoting this Andrew Luth here, I believe what the church teaches, or I'm sorry, I believe what the church believes is the guiding principle here. <laughs> you know, so there you go. I believe what the church believes. Don't believe what the Bible says. You just got to, you kind of, you go along with the system. If you don't believe me, here's, check, okay, uh, check these quotes out. Next page is page 61. Again, quoting this Andrew Luth guy, here's here's what this here, here's what this Luth guy says. And keep in mind, this is supposedly, you know, evangelicals here. And like I said, I'm gonna give you the scriptures here for this in a moment. Why it just again that's why I'm showing this this stuff because it perfectly describes what Trinitarianism is all about right here. This is quoting here. We come back to the fact that Christianity is not a body of doctrine. We come back to the fact that Christianity is not a body of doctrine that can be specified in advance, but a way of life and all that. And uh, I'm sorry, but a way of life and all that this implies. Tradition is, as it were, the tacit dimension of the life of the Christian. That's a huge red flag there. 
What is proclaimed, dot, 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 is only a part of it and not really the most important part. Okay, and, and, and that's quoting this Andrew Luth guy. Um, then the author says, Tradition provides for theologians like Luth a sense of fullness and presence, and thus it constitutes in one of his favorite metaphors the fecund sounds in which the word can be spoken and heard. But it gets even worse. Right under that, he again, quoting him again, here's what he says. Listen to this. To hear Jesus and not just his words. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, you have to have more than just his words, you know. To hear Jesus and not just his words, we have to stand within the, the tradition of the church. Oh, boy. We have to put our trust. Listen to this right here. We have to put our trust in those to whom our Lord entrusted his mission, his sending. In other words, you don't, you know... You don't trust this here Bible. You don't. You don't trust your Bible. Oh no! You you gotta trust the men that came before you. You know, apostolic you know uh, succession. You gotta trust the church fathers, the saints. Get the Catholic thing there. Um, quoting here. Continuing. Part of the stillness that is need for us to hear the words of Jesus is a sense of presence, and it is. Er, and and it is this that tradition conveys. Again, look at this. We become Christians by becoming members of the church by trusting our forefathers in the faith. Do you get that? What he just said right there. I'll read it again. We become Christians by becoming members of the church by trusting our forefathers in the faith. So you don't become a Christian by saying, by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. You come to the end of yourself and you, and you say, Lord, and you know, I trust only in you and nothing and no one else. You know, you are the way, the truth, and the life. I know, I admit to that, I confess that, I, I want you to be, you know, you come to him by faith and, and you know, that. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't do that. You, you know, you become a Christian by becoming members of the church. See, you got you to gotta join the club. You got to be, you know, be part of the, of the religious system here. And then you do that by trusting our forefathers in the faith. So you have to trust men. See, and this is all, and see, this is exactly what the Trinity is about. You don't. You can't read your Bible. You can't read and believe what the Bible says. You can't read and trust His Word. You have to have more, and it comes through tradition. And you have to trust men. You see what I'm saying? You see this and that's why I'm showing this because this is what the, this guy is describing Trinitarianism perfectly. There's no scriptural basis for any of this stuff. It's all tradition. And the only way to do that is by oh, is by not putting faith in Jesus Christ and and learning about His Word. You know, you know, you know. We're talking we're, we're, we're talking about give or exhortation to doctrine. Oh no, you don't do that. Don't do that. You have to trust the forefathers in the faith. You know, and just you know, you don't have to you don't have to turn here, but just again, just a very, 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 very basic scripture. Um, I'm sure. I mean, everyone that everyone is familiar with. You know, Psalm 118, again, we've all heard it, you know, you know, Psalm 118, verse 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Is that too hard to understand? You know, insane. And again, but continuing here, if we cannot trust the church to have understood Jesus, then we have lost Jesus. So I can't understand Jesus by having a personal relationship with him. He dwells in me. I dwell in him. And he and, and, and via his Holy Spirit, he teaches me his word. Oh no. Oh no. We can't have that. We can't have that. We have to have, have faith in the forefathers. And 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 so and so therefore if we can't trust the church, you know, we, we can't trust men to have under, to understood Jesus, you know, we need we, we need some interpreter. We need we need like a Nicolaitan, a priest class, a scribe over us, you know. Then we have lost Jesus, and the resources of modern scholarship will not help us to find him. Whew. That's Trinitarianism in a nutshell, everyone. There's the quote. You can read it. I'll put it right there. Read it. Take a picture. There you go. That's Trinitarianism for you. You know. And just one more. One more quote just to add to this. This is page 62. He uh, he brings up this word. Uh, what is it? Uh, um, uh, what, what's he say? Uh, um, the view of the relation between sacrament... <laughs> Catholic. The view of the relation between sacrament and doctrine has naturally generated this uh, catechal... You know, like like a catechism. Catechal, pra pra catechal practice known as 
uh, misogyny, which you know, you know, big scholarly word there, which means teaching that is provided for those who have already been introduced to the mysteries. Woo. And again, quoting here, in a fully sacramental mystology, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, misogyny, excuse me, the Christian would receive the thing itself and the sacraments, and then and then learn about about in a doctrinal form. Converts make a profession of faith and are admitted to baptism and the Eucharist. A again, this is this is supposed to be a, a evangelical writing to other evangelicals, which is followed then by the teaching and preaching that further um, explicates in conceptual form the mysteries that have just encountered in um, experiential form. See experiences. You know, there's the quote. You can check that out for yourself. And there you go. That's why I just want to show this because, and like I said, I, I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure this book's going to get a whole lot worse. Um, like I said, I'm only a quarter of the way through, but I, I, I saw that. I'm just like, wow. Okay. So, and and, and, by, and by the way, for those for anyone that's saying like, you know, oh, you're just, you know, oh, you're just grabbing a straw. It's like you just picked a random book, you know. Folks, I, I, folks, this is put up by Crossway. They put out the ESP. They're, again, very well known. And I, and I, and I literally, when I started doing research for my book, I literally typed in in, in the Google search bar, uh, top books in the Trinity, best books in the Trinity. And this book came up several times. So that's why I got it. And I'm finally getting around to reading it. And good grief, I'm glad I did because I, I'm, I'm gonna ramrod that one <laughs> all the moon. You know, you know, but, you know, I'm saying that there you go. I mean, and again, here's some scripture from the King's Bible, the scripture which they haven't even given. You know, uh, again, Colossians 2.8. Now, you, and you heard him emphasize tradition, 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 you know. Colossians 2.8, beware, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rumors of, of, of the world, after the tradition of the men, you know, after the rumors of, of the world and not after Christ, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Godhead, one man. Jesus Christ, He is the Godhead. Father, Son, Holy Spirit make up the Godhead. It's all one person. Not modalism, where, where you know He's going back from different modes of operation. You know that bunch of you know heretical garbage. You know you know, put up you know, you put up by a cult. You know you know one is Pentecostal. Again, I, I have there one of these days. I'm going to do a video going through ex explaining why I'm not a modalist and why it's 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 heretical. I mean, again, I have their books. I have their study Bibles. I, I'm not a modalist. I don't believe their nonsense. You know, and again, if you're most watching, look, I don't hate you. I'm just saying, though, you're, you know, your stuff's wrong. Like, but, and, but again, it's it's what the Bible says: ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Modalists, you know, and, and even even Trinitarians will include them both. But they both they'll say stuff that's so really good, so close, so good, and then it's pretty good, and then you know, because why? They're lost. They can't get it. But it's interesting enough. Again, just to, like I said, a lot of that stuff you heard sounded Catholic, you know, Catholic and stuff. Well. Here again, Catholic Catechism of the Catholic Church. This is number 251. It says, in order to articulate the dogma of the Trinity, the Church had to develop its own terminology with the help of certain notions of philosophical origin. Well, we just read, beware lest I mean spoil you through philosophy. Philosophical origin, stubs, substance, person, or hypostases, relation, and so on. And doing and doing this, she did not submit the faith to human wisdom. Uh, yes, yeah, she did. Uh, but gave a new and and an unprecedented meaning to the to these terms, which from then on would be used to signify an inevitable mystery infinitely beyond all that we can humanly understand. See, yeah, and the, the, that book, the evangelicals, he's sitting there telling people, oh, you know, we we need to trust in like the forefathers, you know, of our faith, and we can't trust trust the church, the church. I wonder what church he's talking about. Maybe the one, where, you know, maybe it's the church where you know, the, where, you know, where the likes of Carl Barth and Carl Ron or you know, Thomas Aquinas or something. Maybe it's that church. Just a thought. Two fifty two. The church uses number one the term substance, rendered also at times by essence or nature, to designate the divine being in his unity. Number two, the term person or hypostasis to designate the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the, and the real distinction of, among them. And number three, the term relation to designate the fact that the distinction lies in the relationship of of, of each to the others. You know. But that's the whole point, though. It's not in Scripture. We need tradition. We need all this extra stuff. Extra stuff added instead of the Bible. 
you know. And just one more verse again. Again, you know, a lot of you, if you're familiar with this challenge and you're saved, you know the Kingdom's Bible. You know, you probably know I'm going with this. But if you look at Matthew 15, if you have your Bible, it's just look at it very quickly. Matthew 15. Then came Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commands, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto their I'm sorry, draweth nigh unto me. Who is this speaking right now? Jesus, and he's quoting I, I, Isaiah. The people draweth, draweth nigh unto me, because Jesus is Jehovah God. It's always been one God. He didn't, you know, again, when he sent the Son, you know, into the world, and people say, oh, see, separate person. Okay, then how is, okay, again, like, and I, I, I always, I always hammer on this. Okay, then. How do you fulfill the scriptures in the Old Testament where it clear talks about where it clear said where, where it says gosh God shall provide himself a lamb? You know, and, and that's another thing too. When you when you see God in the Bible, by scriptural definition, it is referring to the Father every single time. <laughs> it's just so yes, Jesus is God, which means he's the Father. I I know that's some big, you know, woo, you know, but the people who draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And that's what you got here with this whole thing, uh, Mr. Fred Sanders, which I, I highly doubt he's watching. Or any of these guys uh, say, "You're not born again. You were not saved by putting your faith in the church or you're trusting the church and putting your faith in the forefathers of it." That's nonsense, and that's and that's Catholic, and, and that's really what Catholic salvation really is all about. I mean, it's just it's just it's just men pleasing, just trusting men. You you just you just you know, don't rock the boat, don't answer questions, you follow men, and that's what and, and that's what and that's what a Nicolaitan is all about. When you read over in Revelation two times, it shows up the the, the, you know, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. That's what it is. People ruling over the common man, suppressing them, keeping them down, making them stupid. That's what Catholicism is all about, and that's what the Trinity is designed to do. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. He is not meant to confuse you. The Bible also says, again, the simplicity is in Christ. Look, the God has a mystery. We will never be able to figure it all out. I know that. There's a lot of things I still, after doing immense studies in the Godhead, I still don't quite understand all of it. But you know what? If you just take your Bible by faith, the Joshua led by faith again, it says, he'll show you so many things in this King's Bible, if you're saved. And if you allow him to. But if you don't believe this book, if you don't want if you just kinda of want to quench his spirit and just say, Well, I want to stick with tradition, guess what? He ain't gonna show you nothing. It's a guaranteed one hundred percent, you know, guaranteed fact. So, just thought I'd show this again. Like I said, this book right here accurately describes what Trinitarianism is all about. Um, written, written, written not by a Catholic, but an evangelical. But it, I mean, but again, the, these guys are so very ecumenical anymore. It's you know, you know, what's the difference? You know. So that's all I'm really going to say about this. So hopefully, I was able to show you again just further proof this Trinity stuff is nonsense. It's contrary to the Scriptures, and whether you want to admit to it or not, it is what it is. Okay. If you if you want to keep denying it, well, that's your problem, not mine. Uh, you'll have to give an account, and I'll, I'll have to give my account. So. That's that's where that's where I ended on that. So thank you all for watching. Have a great day. God bless you all. And again, reject this stupid nonsense.